Okay, hello. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in again, Friday at 5 Mountain Standard Time. And thank you for tuning in from Europe again, it's very late. Um, yeah, I've been actually wondering whether to have the show um, turn to a recorded show just so that I have more flexibility to to go different setting to go to different places and shoot wherever instead of just being here but that's just a thought at this point it's live and I appreciate your participation um, because when yeah when when you have something that's really coming up in this moment and you want to share it's really the the most precious thing that you know it is this is the moment that I feel is really precious that we can really go into something that is in this moment alive in someone's mind and it really benefits everyone and the answer will be really alive as well because you know that is fresh in the mind and really pulls the spirit out so it's not just talking about some concept that might apply one day in one of the scenarios so yeah today um, actually in the last 24 hours I started to have different um, interactions or, or talks phone calls around a very similar topic around I guess the broader topic is love uh, or forgiveness and how to be around in a relationship so I thought it w it's really good to to dive into that especially with with some specific that we can we can discuss so yeah I have um, right now a friend that is tuning in remotely on my phone from Canada and oh, I better okay and she um, yeah she actually has a topic uh, or question that's related in this area that really want me to explore on this show together with her so we can just start there and see where it takes us and here you go Emily that you're on speaker now okay great thank you Francis can you guys hear okay okay yeah I feel so grateful actually to be able to talk to you and I think this morning when we spoke and I knew that I was gonna come on the show and talk it's like the whole day has been orchestrated just to really flush up this intensity that I'm going through so mm. thinking while you were speaking there that you know it's it's much gentler way to interpret it as, interpret it as not that everything's gone wrong but actually it's been orchestrated so I can go into it with you so I'm quite reassuring yeah yeah but just what's been coming up for me a lot is just like just this intensity that seems to be relentless in the mind of this pressure of trying like trying to get it right trying to hear the guidance um, trying to get the lesson like even even things that are seemingly helpful um, steps to take it's like something takes over and there's just this constant state of anxiety where I feel that um, the fear just gets so high and I'm operating from that place of fear rather than inspiration. Yeah, and it's just got to the point where I feel like I can't continue this way. Like, I'm, I'm shutting down actually to the point where, where it starts to come up, I shut down and like I, I kind of don't care anymore or I can't speak or whatever intuition I would usually have around things is lost. 
and what seems to be playing out is that things that I have been able to do in the past that I've been very capable with, I can't even do those things now. It's not even just new things. It's like across the board. There's like, it doesn't, I'm trying harder and harder, yet I seem to, it doesn't really matter how hard I try. It's, it doesn't seem to make any difference. So this came up for me again today, um, a few situations, and um, and then I perceive that I'm getting reflections back of, yes, you are, you have made a mistake, or, and, um, yeah, I'm, the, the, the confusion in the mind is, like, I, I want to go in the direction of, I, of seeing that I can't have done anything wrong and I can't have made a mistake and if I was supposed to see something, I would have seen it and if a prompt didn't come to me or if awareness didn't come to me, that I just need to accept that and um, not beat myself up about it and and just not let that fear come up. But at the same time, I I feel like what actually seems to be playing out is that like I'm being brought back to analyze what happened, you know. Um, and it's confusing because I actually do feel that there's a gift in that. Like there's a gift to looking back to where I disconnected or where there was a prompt that I didn't see. And I, I can see how in some way I feel like that's the spirit bringing into my awareness something that, that will help me, like I want to say in the future and, Mm. But it, yeah, that some, something that that it's like just bringing more of the unconscious into the conscious. But I can't seem to match that with the idea of, but I've done nothing wrong, and if I was supposed to see it, I would have. It's like I, I can't seem to go back and analyze without making myself wrong and feeling this intense pressure where I just completely shut down. Mm. And, and I can see... I can see in that moment when the fear comes up, I'm fighting. Like, I can't even accept the gift. Or... Yeah. Yeah, I know. That the thing is, I, I know this is not something that is new. It, it seems like it's um, it has been playing out again and again in a very similar scenario that you have either reflection or this just feeling like you can't do anything right, you, can, you cannot get the approval that you want. Um, you almost like really want the, the approval and the love, but it's not really coming your way in the way that you really want. So, so you get caught in this loop even of giving yourself more pressure to want to step up, want to do make sure that everything's right so that you you know you can get this approval and ultimate of course love and and i know you have been expressing you know and exposing all these thoughts and all these emotions for quite a while so it's not it doesn't really seem like you have been hiding or uh, suppressing anything. However, <laughs> if if the same kind of scenario keeps playing out and the same kind of feeling keeps coming up, and you felt like you almost get caught in this in this trap that you cannot do everything right and no matter how you try and yet at the same time um, you cannot feel the kind of the, the feeling of relax then that still to me that's indicating there is definitely still something that is still suppressed that hasn't really been forgiven in your mind because otherwise it wouldn't keep projecting on a scenario and have the scenario back up 
with this emotion because that's really how it works. It's not the the scenario causes the emotion. It's the other way round. There is some kind of things that bring up this this emotion. Certain beliefs and thoughts bring up this emotion, and then get it was so difficult to look at,、um, and so difficult to face. So it got projected out into a scenario, and to back up this 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 thing, and that is the way you actually don't look. Is you look elsewhere. You know that is the way that the mind chooses to suppress. Even though we got into this process for quite a while, that we're pretty good at, you know, exposing and at talking about it and exploring within. Then we don't really, really realize that the mind actually still suppresses by looking at. A different direction where the problem isn't. It's like that movie.、Um, now you see me. You know, the more the the closer you look, the further away you're from finding the solution. Because the closer you look, you're looking at the、um, the problem that isn't really the problem. You know, it's a made up situation. That's why. You know, the more you want to solve it, there, the more you want to do things right, the more you want to be up to to meet that criteria, either in your mind or in <coughs> other people's mind.、Um, it's just never, it really never gonna work, because there's something that still hasn't really been looked at in your own in your own mind. You know, and that's that's good because now we can. See, wow! It's been looping for all this time, and I have tried everything. I really tried to do my best, and I tried to express and everything. Nothing worked.、Um, now it's time to really start to to come back and see the, where the real problem is. And the first, I think, this is one thing that I was. Thinking actually,、um, I might go a little off track here because I was I was actually thinking about marriage the other day. I thought I I actually thought for the first time I thought, oh my god, what an amazing symbol! What a beautiful symbol marriage is. Because you know when we 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 come to this world, seemingly it is like. The ego is a wish to to separate, a wish to strengthen this separation belief, and and then we just you know launch from that place of okay, it's a separation, it's a lack. Then we need to get and get and get to to fulfill this lack feeling, and we need to compete so that we can get a little bit more, a little bit more of what I don't care, but whatever other people get. That seems to, you know, feel good. Then becomes my next goal. So the ego, the belief system, is kind of is really built on this competition, comparison, and really meaningless pursuits. You know, in this world, and it just become more and more、um, out of control. Like want more of anything that. That I perceive that I that can can possibly fill this hole, and and also of course it just strengthens this feeling of wanting to get and wanting to get and wanting to get is all about me getting is all about me feeling happy is all about me getting love, and then if I really look at marriage in a in a very symbolic way, I thought it is truly the the turning around. It is truly. The solution, if meta, you know, metaphorically, is about joining. It's about joining with another person's mind so fully. But what does that mean to join with someone? You know, it, it's not really about bodies hanging out together. And the ego definitely use the concept of marriage and relationship for its own purpose. It actually is saying, okay. I seem to not be able to get love in this world for whatever reason, and so I'm gonna get it from this person, and whoever will make me feel more loved and special, 
that would be the one that I'm going to continue to get from. That's the ego's way of using marriage, but really, I feel the true meaning is about mind joining, and about allowing the love to flow. But how do you really love someone if if you don't see this person as innocent? You know, there is no love if you somehow cannot see this person as innocent, truly innocent. And that is what I feel. The marriage is really about the union, even for any relationship and any encounter is about. If someone, when you think about, in your mind, even a thought or a memory, and there's nothing left but this feeling of innocence and purity and love, then the union is completed. Really, it is. It doesn't really matter whether bodies being together. And right now, you know, you are in a relationship, and this is truly the goal: is to be able to see the other person innocent. And it's really the goal in any scenario and any encounter. And this is the only way, also, that we can pull back truly. To allow the mind to start to explore what's really going on with our own minds, because you can never really do that if you subtly believe it's someone's fault, it's someone's behavior or、um, standard that caused you to feel this way. Because if you do feel that way, believe that, then your energy is going to go that way. Your energy is going to go toward wanting to change that person, or change yourself. You want to change yourself so that、um, this is, this scenario doesn't happen. You know, you want to be able to do it so well, so that you never trigger any reflection of lack or any anything. And or you want to change the other person to say, "It's your fault. Why can't you be this? Why can't you be that?" So that I don't feel this way. And the mind is just gonna go there. And you know, you're saying you do sometimes explore. You want to go back to look at what went wrong, how you can improve. And that is really the energy that is is going the wrong direction, because what you're really saying is, I hope. I can control this scenario so that,、um, so that it doesn't happen anymore. And, and this is,、um, whatever this person did or I did, is not truly okay. So I'm gonna change one of it. And then you're gonna jump between either to have someone else to change by, expecting or, whatever way you use or. Or trying to change yourself, and you're gonna jump between that. That's the only way the mind can do. But I feel like the most important step is to allow, find a way to actually make you really feel the innocence of the other person. Because I know that for me,、um, it really works when I actually step back and say, you know, the other person actually has no power. They They have to do what they have to do, and the reason they did it is not because there is a, an agenda or because of this personality or because I cannot go into to analyze a motive. But I will step back and and think to myself: somehow this person is just powerless to to choose what come out of their mouth and to what be- behavior they're doing. It has to be that way. There. Part of a, a play, they're acting out something, and the purpose, <clears throat> the sole purpose of it, is for me to be able to see what is going on that makes me want to keep、uh, generate this scenario. And this person is completely innocent in playing it out, and he, they may not know it, but I have to, I have to know it. And somehow thinking that way for me really works, and I, that really allows me to to see the perfection of the situation, see the the innocence of the other person, and that is a solid step because the mind will in a moment pull back 
from investing into why, 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 and is this person is this and that and this? How do I react next time? This, this is just like completely it. It pulls back by itself, and and that is the solid beginning of what we can, you know, allow the spirit to come in to show us really what is going on, because.、Um, You know what I hear you you're saying is、um, is as if there's a lot of expectations for you to do things a certain way, and no matter how you try, you can never match that expectation, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I would really start to ask myself if I'm in that situation. Like, what is the expectation I have、um, about the other person? Actually, I, I watched this really beautiful movie a few nights ago、um, called "A Brilliant Young Mind," and it's about a boy that、uh, who is、um, autistic and. And he has a very, you know, difficult relationship with people in general, but is particularly with his mother. He's brilliant, very smart in math, and he has a very difficult relationship with his mother. And yet, he has a few really open and good ones with other people. And I was just watching the film. It didn't really say it、uh, explicitly, but it's pretty obvious to me that the boy. Is really open to those those ones friends or his father or anyone that really accept him as who he is and not really trying to change or even think that he has a problem in any way. And the mother, though, even though the mother really loves him and really want to connect, really want to find that connection point, somehow she is playing a mother role to him and want him to act in a certain way. To to show his love for her as a mother, it is very subtle, but that is, and the boy cannot relate to her at all. And the the way that the boy protests is just actually saying something really mean. Is actually saying, you you never do anything right, things like that. But what what is really going on, is, the common goal of wanting to connect, in a relationship doesn't really matter. What kind of relationship? There is a common goal of wanting to connect and not really knowing how. How, but if you are playing a role in the relationship and you have expectation for the other people to 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 behave differently than what they are in any way, then you cannot really connect, and then things can come. You know, this generates frustration for yourself, but it may not come up that acutely. You you probably not able to see it very clearly. Like I have a strong expectation of certain things, but then it it comes back in other bizarre ways. So, do you have any expectations? That you think that this per- the other person never does things right to your standard. Yeah, I guess so. Like it has to be an expectation, even expecting a certain reaction or like an expectation. Because I can see how I'm, I'm seeing it as if the pressure is external and it's coming to me. It's like that's where I. Really feel like I get caught in a loop. Like before, I'm able to like step back and and see that it's it's my mind. It's like when I'm yeah when I'm caught in and I think it's happening to me, and then I'm fighting against it. So yeah, I guess what I'm wanting or what I'm expecting is that that pressure won't be put on me. Yeah,、okay, if, does that make any sense? Yeah, and and also if if there is a role that you're playing in even the relationship, and the other people is not playing the same role as you expected, 
you know, there is a subtle expectation that's there all the time. Yeah, I think what comes to mind there is like sometimes like feeling unsupported, but it's because I see the support is supposed to look a certain way, and it actually might be what I want might be something that actually led me to stay weak because there's a comfort there or something, and that's not yeah being given. And then there's there's a frustration, and then like a projection that I'm on my own or. Being yeah, I think that's that. That's the way to to really start. You know, to let the other person complete off the hook, and then that actually brings the power back to our own mind. Is by looking at. It. I don't even feel it has to be that specific. That you know, whatever you're feeling is exactly what you're doing. Necessarily, but a lot of the time it is like whatever you、mm. feel the other people is not doing to you is what you're not giving in that situation. It's not what the exact thing that you're not really giving. Of course, ultimately it's to yourself, but it's also you're not giving to others because you know this is how the mind works. The others and the self ultimately will merge.、Mm. So. I think it is a good start, and also just to really feel, you know, any time in any situation, especially in a relationship where we don't really feel loved, that is a call to give love. And as I said, there is really no way you can truly, genuinely love someone unless you see this person innocent in that moment. So it's become like every moment is a practice of. Of really wanting to see the innocence of the other person, and of course allowing the spirit to provide if there is anything to to be undone or concept to be dropped in the mind. This is the most important step, and the rest will just follow. Yeah, I can feel like that. Like that. Really inspiring, like I, because I know that if I ever view somebody like from a place of love and innocence, then I can't have the grievance. Like I can't have both. I can't have the love and the grievance. Yeah. I guess it just sometimes it just feels like it's such a leap to get to that place. Like, you know, how do I experientially? Yeah, I get to the place where I can. I can do that. I I guess it's just a constant handing over to the spirit and just really praying and yeah and focusing on my desire for that. Yeah, I think if it is,、uh, you know, if it is feeling like a big leap to be able to see the other person innocent, then it, it is good to start with really watching what、um, what you want from the other person and what you are not, where you are holding back. By giving, what 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 are you fo-、uh, holding back from giving? Where you're holding back from、um, from giving the very same thing you want? And a lot of the times, I I feel, you know, it's not even if you want support, and then is that you're holding back support? Not necessarily, but it could be just. Holding back this permission for the other person to be exactly who they are, <clears throat> not interpreting them in any way that's that's you know as matching your、um, expectations or any concept that you think things should be. Because it's really energetic and subtle. People can feel that, and then you know they play out exactly what's going on in the mind. Yeah, because if I if I can just allow the other person to be the way they are, then I'm not going to be reactive. Because like I see that that's the loop I get into. You know, I'm constantly like judging whether I'm doing right or wrong based on the other person's reaction. So it's like it's so tightly tied in that if I can get to that place where 
yeah, I can kind of step back from that. Plus, I've been practicing that a bit today because I know we spoke last night and just trying as much as I can, like when that pressure comes up and when the fear comes up and I usually just get into a spin of trying to fix it or trying to get it right and noticing that and trying my best not to do that, like just accepting, okay, that isn't clear to me or I don't know the answer to that and I've just been turning to prayer, to the spirit, you know, this isn't clear for me, if there's something that I need to hear, yeah. help me, show me how, how to see this. But it's like that feels so much better to do it that way. Take the pressure off, but be open and be open to the answer coming coming in, but not trying to make it happen. Yeah. And I've been practicing with that today, and it feels much more relaxing. Yeah. But at the same time, there's what I what I, what comes up for me is that. But this is an attentive le- attentive attentiveness lesson as well. It's like you know, uh, I can't just not care. Like if I if I don't care, I'm not getting the lesson or I'm, um, I'm, a, I'm allowing my mind to be unfocused and, and inattentive. So that's where I've been getting a little bit caught. Mm-hmm. Like, do I really have permission to just say, okay, I, I don't know what to do and I'm just going to relax and if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah, the thing is, I, I, I really feel that the problem isn't really there and... Um, you know, it's going to still be a drag to keep trying to solve it there, even in the moment to to say, I'm not going to feel pressured, I'm going to try to relax. That is going to be hard because that isn't really the where the problem is. I really feel the problem is somewhere else. Um, and that is really your focus should be. You allow the spirit to guide you to where you know, you are not accepting things as they are. Not not in this particular scenario even, I would say. Some other aspects of your life. But the spirit will guide you to look at those other areas if your mind is open because the mind is so consumed, is so focused on this, this problem it feels the problem is here and the solution is here and it wants to find out exactly all your attention is here and you you stop to see where the things even start you know and i think you know a lot of the times it can just be a big undoing even of roles in a relationship of a girlfriend role and boyfriend role and um, husband role and wife. Nobody can come into any scenario without expectation if they're pl- playing a role. If they're if they're, they're playing a, a, a girlfriend role or a wife role, husband role, they must have some kind of expectations of the other person to play the counterpart. And that is what I'm talking about, is things in general. You know, there are areas that you, you're calling for to, to look at, otherwise things wouldn't come up. That intensity, this feeling of I cannot, I cannot stand this expectation anymore. I cannot, and then the mind is saying, yes, don't stand it. They shouldn't be having expectation for you, or you shouldn't be having expectation for you. But... But where is that you really have expectations? This is where, where to explore. Mm. Yeah, that feels really helpful. It's like the expectations and the roles are all one, really. Yeah. Like from roles come expectations. Yeah, exactly. And nobody mm. really, you know, in general, feel. Oh, I'm I'm having. You know, some expectation for my boyfriend or for my husband, and that's bad. You know, we can talk the talk in in the spiritual circle. Okay, one thing special is it's bad, or but I feel you are having a pretty intense, acute experience of getting what you give in your mind, and not like it's so different from what is presented that 
you know, you can't even see what what is the cause of it. But now your mind is really open because you have explored this topic for a while. So let's just really explore some other areas that hasn't really been looked at. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, if it's always what I'm not getting, it's the same as like you were saying, seeing the other person as innocent. You know, I'm not going to have that reflection back if that's not where my mind is. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, Francis. Beautiful visual to you. Yeah, thank you, Emily. It's really helpful, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, Should I hang up? <laughs> Should I hang up, or do you want to listen in, anyways? Uh, yeah, I'll listen in. I think. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Thank you can you. mute your microphone. I'll put myself on mute. Okay. Hmm. I really see this right now, uh, you know, that almost like we're going through a phase of exposure. Yeah, because um, I watched this movie again, this movie called um, The Wolf of the Wall Street. I watched it a couple of years ago when it first came out, and the experience at that time was very... Like I felt almost revoked or disgusted by what I saw on the screen, and and this time is such a different experience. Actually, I, I just laughed so hard, and I thought this is hilarious, and it really s shows the insanity of this world. But the first time I watched it, I was just looking back and thinking why it was so different. The first time I watched it. I, I was actually at one point pretty close to that scene, uh, and I had friends who were actually um, bankers um, in Wall Street. And I, I guess it could be that just in my mind there is still something that I actually believed the lies of this world. Like I haven't really seen through the whole, you know, scale of it, the scheme of it, and still thinking what, like watching the the lies and the deceptions, and how people really get what the whole world admires: money and status and fame and everything you ever wanted. And it's all such a lie and deception. It was like, what, you know? And then this time, yeah, I watched. It, I thought this is hilarious. There was a scene um, that Leonardo DiCaprio character was giving a speech on the stage. It's like a motivational speech to the whole company, basically saying how great to make money and how great to be rich. This is the only way to be. And and the funny thing is watching that movie, that scene, knowing the whole background of what, how much deception, how much lies that's going on, and the emptiness behind it, and the fraud, the the hatred, the attack, the fear that's underneath all of that. To watch that, of course, is I just felt like wow, this is, and then watch all the company. Um, cheering and admiring him and yet l look at this life isn't that how normally people go to motivational speech and that's that's exactly how it feels even though we don't really reveal what's going on so i thought this this movie is just like a genius of reveal revealing this world it's like a a little picture or snapshot of of what 
what is being admired and valued and and chased for, um, and really what comes with it as a package, because that is completely built on this separation. It's built on competition. It's built on getting, 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 getting more of it, and then of course the flip side of it is that. That you you feel more and more separated from people, so there is a lot of depression and a lot of fear and attack、um, come with the scene as well. But that is really the whole package of it, and I just feel, you know, right now in in a different part of the world, a different scene is really just a big exposure. I even you know remember this thing because I was checking、um, The internet news, Chinese news, actually.、Um, I was just checking on what is going on there, and I saw quite a few of the the articles was about this new film school is opening, and there are a lot of people wanting to be movie stars, so they they applied, and they just their shots of to compare who is more beautiful. Is that the news on on the you know national、uh, newspaper or something? And I thought this is hilarious because when I was young, that's not the education at all. I remember my friend lent me a pair of、um, skinny jeans. I didn't dare to to wear it in my family, so I I wore it at school. I thought, how is that okay to to be a little modern and And feel beautiful, and no, it was not okay. All the teachers, these teachers I didn't even know, came to me and saying, "This is, you're, you know, you're going to a very, very bad direction.、And、this is not what we value. We value humility. We value humbleness. We value service. We value value being very, very low key." So I thought, you know, yeah, it's not worth it. It's just. Yeah, a lot of criticism, but that was beautiful teaching. But that wasn't really what's going on. You know, when the mind was was still ruled by the ego, so to speak. Right now, I actually feel it's probably a step forward because it's all up on the surface. It's like there's no no hiding of pretending. You know, this is the right way to do it. It's like all over the place. So, and 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 it is really not other people. Other people is to blame, or they are not getting it. It's really, I see it as very symbolic. Is is the ego mind, and that different facet, different aspect, that's reflecting this separation and and the ego. And the good news is now the the world or the consciousness is going through a phase of exposing. Really, nothing can be hidden now. It's all out there. And then, what it provides is really a way just for us to to say, "Wow, is this something that I really believe in and invest in and pursue?" You know, let's find another way. It's not really for us to judge and and compare ourselves with other people. Just to really see false as false, and allow ourselves to be guided to another way of being, of looking within, and of seeing other people. You know, through the lens of the Holy Spirit, and truly started to to reverse that whole process of separate and getting, reverse it to. Give and give. What what are we? What do we have to give? We have the vision of Christ to give. We have the vision to, you know, hold other people as innocent to give. This is what we can give, and we don't really need anything to give that. And that is the only way that we can reignite the love in our heart and to connect.
so I thought I can just open it up and see whether there is any comment or question from the audience. Bridget. Um, what you've been saying is very helpful. I'm looking at uh, my relationship with my daughters, at my role as a mother, which I'm wanting to let go of. And um, I love what you said about seeing the vision of Christ. And one of the lessons that's been the cause, which has been with me probably ever since I started the course, but I've never felt that I've really mined all the gold in it, so to speak. And that's, um, give me your blessing, Holy Son of God. I would behold you with the eyes of Christ and see my uh, perfect sinlessness in you. And, um, and I've been using this in relation to this relationship. Um, and what I'm seeing that is um, getting in the way of my being able to see with that vision is, is, um, is, well, the first thing is the fear of letting go that role because there's a, um, I see that I have an investment in the security of family being there. Um, and I can also see that that security is not real. Um, that it's a false security in terms of, of, of what the Course is teaching. Um, so um, when I was um, bringing that to the surface and expressing that with one of my mighty companions, I couldn't really quite let that go. And then what has come forward, and it's come forward quite strongly today, is um, a, a, a feeling of being guilty, um, uh, uh, not a good enough mother, um, and the, there are stories in my past history with my children which would kind of back that up, and I've noticed them coming forward, and I've been handing them over to see them differently. Um, But I feel somewhere I'm still caught in this. I feel I, um, I don't know whether it's something I haven't yet exposed or um, I don't know. I just don't feel that process of undoing and seeing this through the eyes of Christ has happened. It's not completed. And I don't know if there's any help you can give me in this. I'd be very grateful because mm. I'm, um, in, in many ways, I'm experiencing really tender, sort of delicate, um, feeling of love within myself um, and then all this suddenly comes up you know all this sort of ego stuff suddenly comes up around this relationship and and um, I just want to be able to let that go and to really come back to that um, flow of love and which feels when I'm in it feels so all embracing that none of this is possible but actually this is coming back all the time so I have to look at it I can't 
rest with it as it is. Yeah. Um. Yeah, there is definitely, you know, when you are playing a role in any relationship, it's inevitable. There is a lot of control going on. Mm -hmm. And either you perceive that other people want to control you or you perceive you really want to control other people. Maybe you don't even think that way, but want other people to behave a certain way. Um, there's a lot of that going on once you're in a, in a role. And the thing is, once we're playing a role with, with someone, we actually stop ourselves from getting in touch with what, what is truly, you know, the essence and then the true connection that can happen when we allow ourselves to tap into that. Because in that kind of way, when we actually allow ourselves just to be without a role, the form can take many, many, many shapes and forms. It can be you still cook for your daughter as if you're still, you know, in a familiar scene. It can be you have a very deep talk just as you're having with a friend. It can be you started to share something or allow the other person to to share it might look like a teacher student relationship um it just started to expand you know it started to expand and by really fixing us in in any role you actually basically stop that kind of expansion from happening and of course the other person cannot really relate and you would just feel that is the experience you you almost keep bumping into each other because they're not um playing the part you want them to play they're not meeting your expectation and you're not meeting their expectation and they just keep bumping but it is exactly what you're saying it is the holding on to this role and the thing is um the reason that we're holding onto the role is out of fear you know it is is out of the fear of love because role is familiar and is probably the best thing we have experienced as a substitute of love because when we were playing that role in the past um, when it was truly given there might be some really uh, beautiful experiences or memories but if the role isn't really what is truly given anymore in in that same kind of way then to hold on to that is truly just out of fear of wanting this this experience of love so knowing that is really just just a defense against love then we just have to allow at this point you know as i just said to emily we really have to allow the other person off the hook first and foremost as as long as you still believe the other person can change in any way that can make you feel better, the mind is going to be invested in the wrong direction and all the energy is going to go there and the mind is not going to have any clarity, you know, or the, the space to actually allow the true answer to come in. So I really feel it's, that's why the Course stress so much about forgiveness and really the forgiveness you know, we all know it's not about forgiving other people for what they have done, but to actually let them off the hook to even perceive they have done anything at all. They haven't really done anything because they're playing out a part for some deeper reason, for some bigger purpose. And let them off the hook and not not really trying to fix the situation or the person, I feel, is the first step. Then then we have to tune in to allow the spirit to start to guide us into different experiences and different relationships. This kind of relationship, any new relationship that's coming is not really, um, it's not accident. It's all for that experience of seeing that 
the, the expansion and the beauty of it of allowing yourself to let go and it's safe to let go the reason you can't let go because you don't feel safe yet there is no experience that's backing up that is all okay yet so you just have to allow the spirit to show you and be patient with it but but i do feel the first step is let the other person off the hook thank you, mm. thank you. Mm. okay Well, thank you so much for tuning in today. Have a beautiful weekend. And I'll see you guys next week. <laughs> Bye.